the horse away from that water. Maybe arsenic. More likely that there is strychnine. I was going to take them heifers into Grafton's, maybe three, four weeks. I was going to say to them, you can take my cash bill and tear it up. That's what you can do, Mr. Grafton, because I got me some fine cows to sell you. And I'll take me a new cast iron plow and a saddle for the mule. And a dress for the missus, maybe with fancy embroidery up and down. And a paper sack of them candy bullseyes for the kids. Or rock candy. Or whorehound. I brought that old cow out from Wisconsin tied behind a wagon. Ornery old cow. Walked every step from Wisconsin. Did you see them do it? Two Rikers' hands were up the ridge. Been there for days. Poisoning water. Doesn't sound like Riker. Well, I better get back to the Stareth place. I'll have to fetch you in some water. There's some empty barrels behind Gunderson's barn. We'll be back before dark, ma'am. right away. You did fine, Louisa. Now, don't you worry. I went across Buffalo Creek and I got my new store shoes all muddy. Shane, it's Tom Gary. Louisa, now you tell him what your mother said. Ma said to come and get you right away and I went as fast as I could. Now, Louisa, real slow. Go on. It's Pa. He took his shotgun and he's riding into Grafton's store looking for Roof Riker. Is he riding the mule? Yes, sir. General Grant. 
We better get going. Right. Take your gun. Yeah. The heifers are all dead, and Jemima too. The tongue was sticking out. I know, dear. There was a jackrabbit, dead. Pa poked it with a stick. Get him, I'll do that too. Let the talk sense, will you? Get out of my way. Go, Michelle. Come on, Tom. Let's figure this out. You know, the figure he poisoned my stock. Well, now, this isn't any way to do it. You wouldn't get within 20 feet of Riker. Yeah, well, I don't care. It's wind and drop in the summer and the blizzards in the winter, and then they go and poison my stock. I got no proof. And they don't give a hoot what happens out here. It's all the noise about. I ain't gonna be run off, Riker, you hear me? I ain't gonna be run off. What's he been drinking, Sam? Come on, Tom, let's go home. What the devil was that all about? Did you poison Tom Gary's water? I don't poison a man's water, Shane. You ought to know it. Doesn't make much difference whether I know it or not. Tom Gary thinks you did. I didn't make the water table drop. And I didn't put the alkali on the ground. That's what's gotten in there. Alkali. That hole was always bad in a dry year. His argument ain't with me, it's with nature. None of my concern. Riker, Tom Gary didn't come looking for nature with a 12-gauge shotgun. You'd best be concerned. I ain't gonna let them starve me out. You listen to that, Shane. Don't scare me out, neither. We're with you on that, Tom. Well, I own this place. I got government papers on it in a survey. I own it. There's nobody arguing with you about that. You don't know what that is, owning land. My pa was a hired man back in Vermont. He slept in a barn, and he broke his back heaving stones, and it wasn't even his own stones. And he died under a turned-over stone boat. He didn't have nothing to leave his wife and kids but $80, owing on his wages. I come out here from Wisconsin to own my own. I can go out there and take up a handful of dirt in his mine. You try to kill Riker, the only dirt you'll own will be thrown in a hole on top of your head. All right, I know. Thanks for the coffee, ma'am. It was just right.
Say good night, Joey. I was going to sleep over. Well, I don't know. Maybe some other time, Joey. Ma said I could. Shane. Well, you ain't, uh, after what happened today, I mean, the boy's welcome. Now, look, uh, you ain't as scared of me. Grandpa. You mind, Mrs. Gary? Yes. All right, then. And then I guess it's all settled. Oh, boy. Shane, you know I'm a peaceful man. And I'm not gonna be run off, not by poison or nothing. Any man that sets foot on my place will find out. Anybody. Good night, Tom. Tom, I got supper for you. Joey, you don't settle down to sleep. Your ma won't let you stay over no more. Now go to sleep and be quiet. <laughs> Lloyd! Tom, it's gonna seem better in the morning. I mean, the Sterrett's and Gunderson's being so neighborly. And Shane? Tom, where are you going? Go to bed. Go to sleep. here a million hours until Pa got over being mad. Ma gave us corn dyer sheet. We built our own fire. You were out here at night? It ain't as scary as Pa. Lord! It's Pa! 
ain't gonna be run off, Riker, you hear me? I ain't gonna be run off! What's he shooting at? Well, what's he shooting at? Nothing. He just shoots sometimes. Mostly at night. Right in the middle of the night. Boom! He must have been shooting at something. Uh-uh. Lisa says he shoots for nothing. In the middle of the night sometimes. Boom! I don't think anybody's seen Tom Gary for about three weeks. No, he missed preaching two Sundays in a row. That's not like Ada. She does enjoy the preaching. How is Mrs. Gary? All right, I guess. She looked kind of scared. I'm going over there. No, Marion. Ada Gary needs a woman to talk to. Shane, will you hitch up the wagon? I'll be going over there right after chores. You couldn't get there before dark. I'm not afraid to drive in the dark. Well, I don't know whether I'd like you going over there after dark. Now with Tom brandishing a 12-gauge shotgun. He's got no reason to shoot at neighbors. I'll just take her over some scraps of that blue gingham for a quilt, and we'll just talk. Now, Joey, you get to bed on time, and don't forget to say your prayers. All right, Mom. <laughs> said to Tom, I don't care what it costs. I'm going to buy a poke of white sweetening. For in case some neighbor lady drops in. I never thought it would last this long. I mean, there haven't been many folks dropping by. Take a nice big lump, Marion. And I'm beholden to you for the gingham scraps. It just... Beautiful. <laughs> Though I haven't been doing much lately on my quilt, I guess I just don't take no relish in fancy work. Ada Gary, now you tell me. Oh, Mary and I got no call to burden you when you pay me a sociable call. I'm your friend, Ada. Tom didn't used to be so hard. I mean, he was never a talking man, you know. And he always worked so hard, but now he's out there all day digging for water and plowing. We can't raise crops on half the ground he's turned over. And it's so lonesome at night. Where does he go? Out there. In the dooryard. Or down the hidey hole the children dug in the bank. He stays out all night long with that shotgun. Can't you kind of ease his mind? Bring him to bed. I'm afraid. Mary and I'm a religious woman, and I begged him to get down on his knees and ask Jesus to give him peace. He just went on cleaning that gun and said, where was Jesus when Ruth Riker poisoned her stock? Ada, sometimes it's harder for men. They work so hard, I can go so fast. Oh, you don't know what it's like to have you to talk to. I've been so alone. Tom wouldn't let me go to the preaching or to Grafton's, and he won't go himself. We're near out of lard and baking soda, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Ada, now sit down. Come on, have some coffee. Go on, take some of your sugar. Oh, poor Tom. Sitting out there in the cold without the comfort of Jesus. Poor Tom. sleep when I keep thinking of Ada, the children. 
Tom will be all right soon, won't he? You don't think so? It's hard to say, but... Once I was cleaning the stable, I found a spider web. I tore it down. Next day it was there again, so I tore it down again. It went on for about ten days, spider building his web, me tearing it down. Then slowly the web began to change. The angles weren't precise anymore, they were twisted, out of balance. As though the spider was trying to find a design that couldn't be destroyed. He never found it. And I don't know if he ever built a proper web again. Want my coat? No. I'll be going in now, Shane. Good night. Good night. the way you get your pants dirty. Shane, don't you get hoof pickings in my wash. I'm all done. Look, there's somebody coming there. Roof Riker. I saved some from Tom Gary's water hole. I'd be proud to give it to you. Now listen here, Starrett. I don't want no trouble. What do you want? It's about Gary. You gotta do something about him. He took a shot at me over by Twin Forks Trail. Near hit me, too. Well, now that is too bad. We sure are gonna have to speak to him about that. Now listen here, Starrett. This is no comical business. He was up behind those two rabbit ear rocks when I come by. What do you expect, Riker? He who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. <laughs> Amen. You're going to laugh out of the other side of your face, old man. Look, Riker, you've been pushing every farmer in this valley. You shouldn't be surprised if one of them starts pushing back. Maybe that's part of the deal. But Howells came by a half hour later, and he let fly at him. And an hour after that, he shot Austin's pack horse. Now, them are your people, homesteaders. You sure it was Gary? He hollered down to Austin. It was Gary, all right. 
What do you want us to do? You drove him to it. I didn't come crying for no help. I can take care of myself. Any sod buster try to ambush me is going to end up six feet under. But this is something else. He's gone local, shooting at his own people. Why should that bother you, Riker? Fighting's one thing. I don't want an addled man on my conscience. He's one of yourn. You do something about him. What is it, Louisa? It's Pa. He done something awful. You've just got to come. What is it? Louisa! She shot! Pa shot her! Son, say something so your mom know you're up there. Come on, say something, son. Ma. What happened, Ada? I don't know. He got so he wouldn't talk to me at all. And then he said he couldn't trust me neither. He said I was with them. Who? With that Riker and everybody against him. He cursed at me. And I swore I wasn't against him. But he wouldn't believe me. He said he was taking the boy up in the hills with him. And he was going to fight everybody off who come against him. Roof Riker and... Shane, stare at me, everybody. You have to go bring him back. He'll hurt himself out there. We'll go after him. Well, I reckon I better stay here with her until Marion comes. Mrs. Gary, what kind of supplies did Tom take with him? Well, I've come in from the garden patch. He was so uh, tying up a pack. Looked like some food and boxes of shells. And he had his shotgun and them old pistols from the war. What kind of man would shoot his wife like that? We better head out. No, wait a minute. This ain't none of my business. You were up in those hills ten years ago, trapping with the mountain men. What that do? No, we got to track Tom from where you last saw him. I need your help. And you're going to give it to me. Tracking. That's all.
Let's head up there. Right. five years ago. Rabbit. Took three days to hunt him down. It's a good fire, Riker. You'll be safe. I'm not a man that gets scared of much. I went through the war in 62. I fought the Indians in Arizona. I shot and I've been shot at. This ain't the same. It's like cattle. You can drive them, turn them, almost anything you want with them. Every once in a while, you run into one. It's eating local wheat or something. And sometimes that steer will just come charging at you. It won't turn. Come charging at you with a wild eye, and it's long, twisting horns, and it keeps coming. And there's nothing for you to do but shoot it right there. Shoot it dead. a kid. I used to think he was old as Methuselah. <laughs> I guess he's about the same as I am now. He used to sit in his rocker out on the porch. Just look out over the hills. Wouldn't talk to anybody or hear anything. Just sit and just rocking. You had to feed them. You had to clean them. He weren't no use to anybody, not even to himself. The kids were scared of him. Just like the Gary kids, scared of him. I know what you're driving at, Riker, and I don't buy it. No use to himself, no use to anybody else. With that shotgun in the dark, she got an edge on her, Shane. me more. Those wolves or that local nester up there. He's off that way somewhere. Wolves are way off. That way, maybe a mile. If you know, the two of them would get together. <laughs> Those wolves could save us a lot of trouble. Riker, we are not going to kill Tom Gary, you understand that? You didn't poison that water hole. I told him I told You poisoned him. him. Poisoned his whole life. He's up there because of you. And I'm not forgetting that.
close. He's up there in those rocks somewhere. We're gonna have to go up and get him. Shane, in my time, I've been as cocksure as any man. But you remember that local steer I told you about? That's Tom Gary. I ain't gone up there. You want him, you're gonna have to go up from yourself. I'm gonna hit for that tree. You threw a couple of shots up to keep him down. I can't reach him with a 45 and hope to hit the side of a barn. I'm gonna duck anyway when he hears a shot. Okay. You ready? Shane, he takes a shot at you. I want you to shoot to kill, here. Yeah? I'm not going up there to do your work for you, Riker. I'm not talking about that now. Look at here, Shane. I'm gonna go on fighting those sod busters till I clear the last one of them out of my valley. And I can sleep easy. But with him up there, there ain't nothing you can do with a man gone like Tom Gary. Reminds me of my own ma. Spending her life taking care of that old man. And now Ada Gary. With him dead, she can sell out, move back east. Maybe even find herself another man out here and go on living. I'm going up now. Get your gun out. Shoot him dead, you'll be doing him a favor. You hear me? I know you. Let me alone. I just want to talk to you, Tom. Now listen. I'm coming out. My hands up. See? I'm not gonna hurt you. Don't you remember how I helped you before? Brought in water for you. I'm your friend. Tom, I just want to talk to you. you stay right there. Sure. Sure, I'm not coming any further. I'll just stay right here. What do you want? Ada told me to come for you. She's dead. You're lying to me. They killed her. She's dead. No, she isn't. She's all right. She's worried about you. I had to shoot her. I told her that. I had to. They made me. She knows that. She wants you to come back home. I can't. They're waiting for me. I tried to keep him off. I shot at him during the night. 
But you can't kill him. She didn't understand that. Tom. What's a man supposed to do? They kill my stock, you know that? They poisoned my water hole. And he was trying to poison me. Kept putting it in my food. She done it, Ada. That's why I had to go away. I couldn't sleep none at all. I had to watch for him all night. Roof Riker and Shane and all them. Sure. I know. A man can't watch all the time. Poison and, 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 and creeping up on you. And your own wife gone and turned against you. You know what? My wife Ada's a good woman. And now they killed her. I ain't got nobody left now. Nobody at all. Tom, you need a rest. Let me help you. I'll keep guard for you. You just put your gun down, and lie down, and close your eyes. I'll keep watch for you. Right here in the shade. You just watch the sky, maybe. Listen to the wind. I'll keep watch for you. Nobody here, Tom. You can be all alone. Just quiet. I'll take care of you. Just like Ada told me to. Man can't think when he's tired. You need a rest. You got a right to sleep, Tom. You just lie down and close your eyes. Just lie down and sleep. Nobody here, Tom. You can be all by yourself. Just let it drop. All that heavy weight. Scratch Ada. He'll be up and around in no time. Marion flop hogs. You better check the chickens and the cow. I'll take care of it. Shane. You tell her, Miss Gary. Tell her not to worry. I mean, not about me nor any of my men. That's a little late. I still don't think you did her no favor. She'd be better off a widow. She doesn't think so. children get 
get to sleep, I'm going to be here all night and everything's going to be quite all right. 